Welcome back, everybody. This is episode six of the Playmakers podcast. We are now into March. We're recording this on March 1st. So thank you all for supporting us throughout the month of February. Neff, how's it going? It's going pretty good. I'm glad that it's getting warm. <laughs> I see, for those of you watching, Neff, you are rocking a Luka Doncic jersey today. Oh, yeah. The poll on Twitter ended up being Luka over everyone else. So I think it was Devin Booker, Steph Curry, and... Trey Young, so Luca got the most votes. So here so it is. Here it Luca, is. Luca is well, uh, now an official face of the Playmakers podcast. We got some big NFL stuff to talk about this week. You mm-hmm. we touched on it a little bit. Yeah, I um, recorded a little video on Instagram earlier today and posted it on the Playmakers podcast Instagram account uh, regarding the signing of all all pro. Defensive end, J.J. Watt. Uh, yes, the former, I believe, three-time defensive player of the year, J.J. Watt, who spent his entire career with the Houston Texans. He's He and the team mutually agreed to part ways, so he's been a free agent for the past couple of weeks. Uh, there's been a lot of fun, goofy conspiracy stuff on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, and after all that nonsense, has, the dust has settled, and he's signed a pretty nice contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Hey. Him and D-Hop are back at it again. That's true. So they are now the Houston of the further west. <laughs> uh, so uh, this kind of came out of the blue here. I know there's a lot of talk about Green Bay, talk about Pittsburgh, Buffalo. No one really said Arizona. So what, what was your reaction hearing uh, J.J. Watt for the Cardinals? I mean, I thought he was ring chasing, to be honest. So I thought he was going to go to a team that was, like, complete. Mm-hmm. So Green Bay... Buffalo, Pittsburgh, maybe Indy. Chris Ballard was really trying to get J.J. Watt mm-hmm. to come to Indy and stay in the AFC South, I believe. And uh, so, yeah, I I was like, I was very surprised when he posted that picture of him lifting weights in an Arizona Cardinals jersey or T-shirt or shirt, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It was weird because he he tweeted out might it was him who said mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So on that on the line, what did you think of like the crazy social media craze? Really, that was like anytime JJ Watt tweeted anything, there's like a hundred hundred plus people in his comments who were like, "Oh, this obviously means he's going to Philadelphia or something." Like, what? what like, how weird was that? I mean. Who wouldn't want J.J. Watt on their team? Like, let's be honest. That's a good point. That was a good point. J.J. Watt is quite a face in the NFL. Yeah, he J. is. J.J. A... Watt has gotten in the face of so many people in the league over the past 10 years. Something like that. 11. Yeah, he, he is on the older side, but he is still, like, one of the best players ever defensively. And still has a lot left on his legs. I don't know if he had quite as much as Arizona clearly think he does. This is a hefty contract, even if it's only for a couple of years. That's a lot of guaranteed money to a guy who has injury concerns. And that's one of my few problems, really, with this, this signing is the injury concerns with J.J. Watt and all the things that go along with that. But if it hits, if he stays healthy, if he builds a good rapport along that D-line, I know they already have. There was a stat, Chandler Jones actually leads the NFL in sacks since 2012, and now he's playing with J.J. Watt, who's second in the NFL in sacks since 2012. So if those two guys are working well, you got one of the best edge-rushing duos in the entire league. Um, their defense is a lot of young guys. I think Buda Baker in the back end, Isaiah Simmons is a defensive guy they drafted in the top 10 last year. Uh, they're just a young team in general. Kyler Murray, the Kingsbury's a very young head coach. So put all these pieces together. You have guys like J.J. Watt. Those are the kind of blue guy veterans who can take a good young team to a legitimate contender. Yeah, because he's got – that defense now has J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones. Uh, Hassan Reddick is still there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The middle linebacker. I forgot about him. They got Hassan Reddick. And is he on the linebacker? He's some kind of linebacker, I think so, right? I think, I think he's a right outside linebacker because he's an edge rusher. I oh, okay. But um, do they still have Patrick Peterson? 
they still have Patrick Peterson and they have Buda Baker and they got Isaiah Simmons. Yeah, so they got some pieces now on that defense. Kyler Murray in the offense played well last year. Now that he has a real number one receiver. Uh, they have a lot. They have other young guys. I know Andy Isabella is a young receiver, so he could get better with Kirk. age. What? Christian Kirk. Uh, Christian Kirk, the name, uh, a guy I really like, but I forgot about in that little tirade there. So they got a lot of young pieces now. They're getting these veterans. Uh, I hope Larry Fitzgerald comes back, unless he retires. They got Kenyon Drake in the backfield. Oh, they do have Kenyon Drake. I think he traded for him last year or two years ago. I don't remember when that was. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of interesting things going on in Arizona. So, we know all the good things about them. Do they make the playoffs, though? Maybe. Yeah. They almost yeah. did this year. Sure, they did almost make the playoffs this year. They're in position. But how brutal is that division? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Russell Wilson. I, <laughs> I sent you that graphic, didn't I? Yeah. Russell Wilson is going to get pounded by Aaron Donald, Chandler Jones, now J.J. Watt. You got Nick Bosa. It's, it's yeah. just, but that's just a brutal division, both pass rushers just in general, because the Rams, best defense in the league last year, they made the playoffs. The Niners, when they have a normal amount of injuries as opposed to the epidemic they had last year, they are one of the best teams in the NFL. I mean, they made the Super Bowl two years ago. You have the Cardinals now, who are a young, up-and-coming team, a lot of good players through. And then you still have Seattle, who, for the time being, have Russell Wilson. And I think we should get into that a little later, all that crazy nonsense as well. But I think we can get into that next week as things start to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so, regardless, the NFC West is an absolute gauntlet. But I think getting guys like J.J. Watt just adds the reinforcements. The Cardinals need to take them above, perhaps, San Francisco or above Seattle. No wonder Russell Wilson wants to get out. Absolutely. I think things are looking worse for him because the Cardinals keep getting better, the Ram or the Rams keep getting better, and the Niners keep getting healthier, and the Seahawks keep getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the way it is, unfortunately, for him and for the fans there in Seattle who are so used to their success and their dominance over their division. Um, anything else you want to add about J.J. Watt before we start talking about this free, this free agency class? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think we said all we needed to say. All right. So you brought this up to me a couple times, um, but this free agency wide receiver class specifically is, like, comically loaded. So just list off some of these names out here. We got Allen Robinson, uh, Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith-Schuster, um, T.Y. Hilton, you got Antonio Brown and A.J. Green. So, big class. Julian a, Edelman, who made that insane catch in the Super Bowl. That's true. A lot of dudes, uh, a lot of talent, old guys, young guys. So, of the group, give me your top three guys of this year's receiving free agency class. Like, So, you're a Colts fan. They need receivers. Let's pretend that there's no cap issues. I think the Colts probably could afford any of these guys with their cap oh, yeah. situation. So top three guys, you're Chris Ballard. Who do you want? Um, I would go for a uh, small, uh, medium-sized guy because we got players like – we got Paris Campbell all the way up to Michael Pittman. And we also got T.Y. if he stays. Um, I want – a spec catch, a spectacular catcher like Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson can just get up and make those, make them catches. Because you know, we're gonna need someone like that with a quarterback in Carson Wentz. No offense mm -hmm. to Carson Wentz, but he's he's got to get back on the horns. Hey, this is I, I hate to interrupt you, but so as I pointed out to you before we start recording, I'm wearing a uh, Penn State jersey here today. I actually wore this jersey to a Penn State game where Allen Robinson made this crazy catch. Though it was 2013, uh, they're playing Michigan on their homecoming game. And they're down, I think, seven with like two minutes left. And Christian Hackenberg, who's the quarterback at the time, throws this like 40-yard bomb. And Allen Robinson makes this crazy contested catch in the air over a defender's back down to the one-yard line. They score the touchdown. They end up winning in triple overtime. So Alan Robinson, since those days back in Happy Valley, the man is just a beast. He's a superstar, man. Oh, yeah. All right, continue your other two guys that you want to point out. Uh, I mean, I would, 
I would go for uh, Chris Godwin because he's he's very reliable. He's a very reliable receiver. He's very he can catch many balls that you throw his way because Tom Brady threw some questionable passes <laughs> this this year, and whew, don't get me started on Jameis Winston. <laughs> um, yeah, did you see the stat? It was really funny though. Um, like for his first couple years in the league, he had like two drops total. And then ever since uh, Al Michaels on Sunday Night Football said he like can catch everything and never drops a pass, he had like six pet drops in the postseason. <laughs> That's but out- outside of that silly anomaly, you're right. He's incredibly reliable, great hands receiver. And I would say may- maybe Kenny Galladay. Mm-hmm. Or actually, we need someone – that's like built. So, and we have that in Michael Pittman. Mm-hmm. So maybe Nelson Aguilar or mm-hmm. Corey Davis. Those reliable players like Chris Godwin and Allen Robinson. Yeah. So when I look at this class, I see a couple different like tiers of receiver. So Allen Robinson, Chris Godwin, maybe even Kenny Galladay. Eh, probably even Kenny Galladay. I like Kenny Galladay a lot are guys I say that right now you can put on your team and they are number one guys. Mm-hmm. They can be your top receiver. They can catch 60 plus, 60, 70 balls in a season. Pro Bowl guys. Like, difference makers. And I see, like, a tier beneath that that are guys who could be that level, but they still have to prove it. And that's where I think Juju and Corey Davis come. Those are two guys who have shown flashes. Juju was really good, especially early in his career. They've, shown re- they, they've played really great football at times, but mm-hmm. with Corey Davis, it's only been in moments, hasn't been consistent. Yeah. And with Juju, it's really been, it started out really good, but it never got better than that. It's actually gotten worse as he's become more of the number one guy. So I think it'd be interesting either if they re-sign with Tennessee and Pittsburgh, or if someone else signs them, if they can take that step to be a consistent number one, number two guy, that Pro Bowl guy that they need to be and that we expect them to be. I mean, Corey Davis, he was a top five pick a couple of years ago. Yeah. If you're drafting a receiver, even the first round, let alone in the top five, you expect him to be a difference maker, a big time pro bowl, all pro guy. When, when Antonio Brown left Pittsburgh, Juju was the number one guy. Yeah. But has he played to that level? No. Yes. He just has I think, here's what I think is going to happen with Juju. I don't think they're going to resign him. You think they got, walk? they got a lot of depth in their receivers. Yeah. They, and they draft. Good. They draft really well too, receivers. Yeah, they got James Washington mm-hmm. and Deontay. What's his last name? Deontay Johnson, I think. I think it's Deontay Johnson. And then they got Maple Bandit Clay. <laughs> the Maple Bandit Chase Claypool. Oh, bless! I love that guy. Hey, um, I, I think Marvin Jones would be a good pickup for any team too. Yeah, super reliable guy. He has produced at times like a number one. He's a little older now, but he'd be a great addition to pretty much any receiving core. I think that – I believe that Tampa Bay may keep Antonio Brown Mm -hmm. and let Chris Godwin walk because Antonio Brown is cheaper at the moment. Yeah, he's definitely cheaper. You can get him for a pretty and, and he's definitely still got his talent. Like he's mm-hmm. a little older than he's older than Chris Godwin by a few years, but I mean, yeah, you saw like like his touchdown in the Super Bowl, how quick his feet were, how good his route yeah. running still is. Yeah, you can add a lot. And under Tom Brady's leadership, I think he won't you know, yeah. return to his clown ways. Yeah. And I think that's interesting cuz Chris Godwin's going to get the money of a true top number one guy. They already have that money locked up in Mike Evans. And they still need money to re-sign Levante David, to potentially re-sign Shaq Barrett. And those guys were hugely important to winning that Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Probably even more so than Chris Godwin was, if we're being completely honest, as far as just like yeah. that individual player's impact. I mean, the so, ball mostly went to Gronk, Evans, and A.B. Yeah, certainly in the playoffs. There's a lot of those guys... Chris Godwin was not in it. Yeah. In the- I mean, in the regular season, he still had a great regular season. But mm-hmm. when, when it mattered most, he wasn't their number one guy. So I think you're right. It's perfectly realistic that uh, 
they could go after the cheaper guy who they trust just as much and then use the extra cap space to resign their defensive stars so they can keep that core going. Um, so I was talking about the different levels of receivers. I think there's a lot of guys I see on this list who are older guys like an Antonio Brown who can still add something, even if they're no longer that elite receiver. When I think of that, I'm thinking AB. I'm thinking especially AJ Green is a big name on that kind of tier. And then maybe, but I'm less certain about that, like maybe perhaps Golden Tate could still add something. Deshaun um, Jackson could still add something. I'm a little less certain about those two, but certainly AJ Green and Antonio Brown are guys. I, I think he still has something to continue. Oh, yeah, T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So these are I'm guys. I'm going over T.Y. Hilton. <laughs> I, like, I, I think we all like these guys, and their reputation is of the Pro Bowl, all pro receiver, but the reality is they're just not at that level anymore. And, but that doesn't mean they're bad. And similarities can be taken from Andrew Luck and Reggie Wayne. So could they keep, do you think they'll keep T.Y. Hilton? For keep that kind of continuity? Yeah, because, I mean, if Andrew Luck, w- without Reggie Wayne, I don't think Andrew Luck would have been the same quarterback. Yeah. Because I think Reggie Wayne was a big part of Andrew Luck's decision making mm-hmm. and play recognition. Yeah. Um, because if you look at if you look at the way he played in 2013 and 14, those years he was he was on he was on like elite level. I mean, it's yeah. not like he ever dropped from elite level un- b- unless it was because of an injury. But I think Reggie Wayne was a big part of that learning process for him. So maybe maybe they keep T.Y. Hilton to teach Carson Wentz a little bit of that. Yeah, I, w- I would understand that, trying to keep like a more experienced receiver to help that transition. Because if you don't keep T.Y. Hilton, your returning receivers are, as you say, Pittman, and uh, what's the series from Ohio State whose name you mentioned? Uh, Paris Campbell. Yeah, Paris Campbell, who are both really young guys in the like, first and second year. So they might not have that knowledge and that experience. Uh, Zach Pascal, who yeah. isn't really. <laughs> so the, I see that, understanding that risk of like that continuity. But if you have the opportunity to get Allen Robinson or Chris Godwin, oh, yeah. it, you, you, you would replace T.Y. with that 100%. And then maybe if you can get T.Y. on a cheap deal as well, I mean, best of both worlds. But I don't know if that's possible. If you could, if you could get T.Y. on a cheap deal, plus a person like Allen Robinson or Chris Godwin, I'd let Pascal walk. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because that would, I mean, is he a top four, is he a top three receiver on that team anymore? No. So I could understand the, the want to drop him, especially when you have the young, other young guys like Campbell who hasn't played all that much. You want to keep getting through the ranks? But Pittman's going to really need to step up, though. I thought he had a pretty good rookie year, all things considered. Um, it five, wasn't like... He had 500 yards and one touchdown. Yeah, for a rookie, that's not too bad. Obviously, like, the perspective of what's a good rookie has been kind of blown out of proportion because every year, every year, every other year, we have guys who have crazy Pro Bowl seasons like Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Yeah, he had, like, 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns or something crazy this year. Rugs. It, yeah, this year was an exception. Honestly, if you look at Henry Ruggs' stats, I think they're actually worse or at least comparable to Michael Pittman. It's just in pure, so pure numbers. So I think Michael Pittman actually did a pretty solid rookie year, and he can keep building into it, especially since he is a great physical build for a good receiver in this league. Mm-hmm. He's big, he's strong, he's still fast. He's not like an elite burner, but he has good speed. I don't know if he's quite as domin- dominantly athletic as Chase Claypool, but he's still a very good receiver, so he's a guy who can really build into that role and keep developing as a top receiver in the league. So you how give him... Strength, how did what? the strength of Colts talk? Yeah, we should start marketing this podcast to Colts fans because this ends up talking a lot about the Colts because you're a Colts fan, and that's just where it runs. That's just how it be. There are worse things to have as your niche. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, but if you're the Miami Dolphins, would you would you go after any of these? So if I'm the Dolphins trying to build my new fancy team, what who, they're trying to do? Who would you chase after the most if you're the Miami Dolphins? The most? Um, I might go Godwin. I like Allen Robinson personally, just me, the most by like a lot, followed by Will Fuller, just who I like the most. But Chris Godwin is a guy who has shown as le- at least as much as Allen Robinson to be the number one guy on a team, on a good team, on a pretty solid team. But he's also younger than Allen Robinson by a few years. And I think that's very important for Miami because no matter where they go with Tua or with another quarterback, they're still a very young core and a young team. And whether they get with Tua or they trade up for a quarterback or they draft or trade up for a quarterback this draft, trade for Deshaun Watson, whatever it is, their timeline is still more three years from now as opposed to right now. I think Chris Godwin is a guy who will still be an elite receiver three years from now. And while I think Al Robinson certainly could be, with his injury history and him being closer to 30, it's you're probably not going to get Allen Robinson's very best three years from now as opposed to Chris Godwin. So that's what I would go after. And then after that, along that same line of logic, Kenny Galladay's a slightly younger guy, I believe. Uh, and Juju, who's like 22, 23. He's a guy I would love to have on my team, Dolphins. Maybe not as a number one guy. If you if somehow they could find a way to afford Chris Godwin and Juju, which I don't think is possible based on how the caps work, that yeah. would be that would be an absolute steal for them. But I think aren't they trying? Aren't all the rumors saying they're going to go after Aaron Jones of the Patricks, or of the Patricks of the Packers at running back? Yep. So if you get him, and then also have the money to get one of Juju and Chris Godwin, plus whatever you do in the draft, be it get Tavonta Smith, that's another good receiver they can pick up right away. Then they have a fully loaded attacking uh, like core of weapons there. They also have Devontae Parker. They do, and he's a, he's turned out pretty good after a few rough start uh, seasons to start his career. He's turned into a very good player. <laughs> yeah. They also got Mike Gesicki, too. When in doubt, just lob it up to Mike Gesicki. Bro, oh, is that another uh, Penn State reference on the on the on the pod? I am a Penn State fan for this episode and this episode only. Um, <laughs> All right, I, I do want to talk about one more thing about the receivers. So we look at this list. I'm going to list a name, like the, all the names in order, and you tell me if you think their current team should try and re-sign them, based on whether you think he's just a good player, whether it fits their cap, because it's time. So you tell me if you think they should resign. All right. Chris Godwin. Let him walk. Kenny Godwin. I mean, if I were the Lions, I'd try to sign him to help out Jared Goff. <laughs> I mean, you don't think you don't think he should stay there, but you think for the Lions' think, purpose. I don't – from Kenny Galladay's perspective, I say get the hell out <laughs> of here. If I'm from the Lions' perspective, just please come back. Like, we beg you. <laughs> Allen Robinson. Walk. I think that's another one like Kenny Galladay where I think the team should be doing everything they can to keep him, but he yeah, but, should want to get out. Yeah, but they're not. Like, they that's, haven't talked. They haven't talked, which is so dumb. The relationship so... between the relationship between the Chicago Bears and Allen Robinson is unsavable. I think. Yeah, it. Yeah, he's probably going to walk, even though he, they absolutely should have done everything to keep him. All right, Juju. Let him walk. Uh, Ty. He, he was. The, oh, the thing yeah, about Juju is just he's such a nice guy. Like he's yeah. a really nice guy, and he's a really like big person in the sports world and the gaming world and mm-hmm. social media and stuff like that so i mean that's also a really good thing for a team mm-hmm. to have that's true it's a good point but like i mean after everything that happened last season with all the you know all the teams just absolutely roasting the steelers just mm-hmm. for having a player dancing on their logo and stuff like that mm-hmm. which I mean, it was bad, but, you know, have some. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, T.Y. It depends. It depends. On the that, number? On That one depends on who they sign. Like if they get someone else or can't like get somebody if, else? If they get someone who's much, like, better, more suited, mm-hmm. yeah. 
So let him walk. Uh, Will Fuller. Isn't he already a free agent? Did they just cut him? Oh, shoot. Did they? I think, I think they just cut him. All right. Whatever the situation, Will Fuller's free agent and the Texans are a bad organization, so they're probably not going to sign. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's do a couple more here. Uh, Corey Davis. Keep him. Uh, Julian Edelman. Let him walk. He's old. <laughs> and injury prone. Uh, Sammy Watkins from the Chiefs. Uh, yes and no. Cause he's, a, he's a good – he had very, very, like, a lot of potential as a younger player. But now in his older years, he's a very good coach for the – for the younger generation, and Tyreek and McColl and yeah, he's all he's also like a not a bad like third, second, and third, fourth option. He's still not bad. At no, the age yeah. That he is. So yeah, I mean, I can see that happening. And then, all right, two more. Keelan Cole, Jaguars. He's a young guy, and he's mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, what very under, very underrated, honestly. Very underrated. Um, I think Urban Meyer should keep him. I don't think he's underrated by the Jaguars as much as anything. Because they they made such a big deal of, over LaVishka Chanel. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, you literally had two <laughs> right there. Uh, if I were Urban Meyer, I'd let him walk. Or I'd, I'd keep him. But if I were Keelan Cole, I'd walk. Just because. Yeah. They just haven't given him the chance that he deserves. And then last one. What do you think Larry Fitzgerald should do? I think he's going to retire. Actually, actually. Here, here. Not- let me phrase it this way. Should he sign back up with the Cardinals, try and ring chase in Green Bay or wherever the heck I don't like think he thinks he- is good, or should he retire? I don't think he should ring chase. Mm-hmm. I think he should, he should just stay with the one team for the rest of his career. Yeah. Especially since he has at most another year left. He might retire. We don't know yet. I mean, by the time this comes out, he might have retired. But – if he chooses to play another year, I think the legacy of being an Arizona Cardinal for 15, 16 years, however long he's been there, means so much more than if he was, like, the fifth option on a Super Bowl-winning Packers team. You know? I mean, I don't think he would be a fifth option just because. <laughs> but but you get my point. Just, like, yeah. the legacy of a ring-chasing championship versus being on one team your entire career. It, like that, that being a one team player and being a good one team player, even if you don't win a championship, that means so much. Imagine having more tackles than drops in your entire career as a wide receiver. Oh, as a Blair, wide receiver, Barry Fitzgerald is wild in how good he is. He's one of, I, I think he's one of the most underrated players of all time. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Because I don't know, because he's never really been that flashy. And again, this is part of the problem of being in Arizona your entire career when they've been good like twice. <laughs> It, it kind of hurts his legacy in that way, but he's been so good his entire career. So, yeah, whether he decides to just retire, stay in Arizona, or even if he decides to ring chase, uh, Larry Fitzgerald is the best, and we love you. <laughs> uh, any more NFL stuff for this uh, week? I think that's it, other than hashtag free Deshaun Watson. Yeah, free Deshaun. That, that situation is complete travesty. Deshaun's like he's talking missing game checks, talking about missing out on millions of dollars just so he never he said, has to play the Texans said, again. Pay. He said, "I'll pay the organization millions of dollars if it means I don't have to play a game with them." Do you know how bad you have to mess things up that your quarterback is willing to just forego tens of millions of dollars not to play for you? Oh my god! It's... Texans are a joke. What? A... Oh my god! Did I send Worth you? The... Did I send you the meme of uh, the SpongeBob meme where it's like SpongeBob and Patrick are running, but it's got Jose <laughs> and DeAndre's names, and then Deshaun looking out the window, looking at the like, so much fun. Oh hey, if god! You haven't seen that? I'll send a, I'll send it to Topher, and I'll ask if he can put it. Right. Oh, right. God. Oh, poor Deshaun. I feel so bad for him. All right, so yeah, next week we'll, we'll get into Russell Wilson stuff, whether he gets traded, whether the situation gets resolved. We'll talk about all that next week. And then hopefully this week or also next week, we're going to rank 
all 32 coaches because we talked about doing that. We just haven't gotten around to it. I've had some computer issues that prevented us from doing it this past week. Um, but yeah, so hey, we have also, more content on that front coming. Be on the lookout. We're going to get Topher's favorite NFL team on that wheel. Yes, that's too. That right. may come out this week. Maybe. 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 We might wait for that. TBD. But the point is, fun content is coming for you NFL loving people. All right. We are going to take a little intermediary period before we get into NBA stuff. I just wanted to talk briefly about lacrosse. I don't want to talk about anything specific. Just as the Premier Lacrosse League offseason chugs along, uh, today we had protected rosters unveiled. We've had big trades, Paul Rabel to the Cannons, Connor Fields to the Archers, uh, Rob Pinnell to the Redwoods, probably more trades coming. We have the expansion draft coming. I will keep chatting about that stuff on this podcast, this year podcast. Hopefully we talk more lacrosse in the future, either me and Neff chatting it up. Uh, I hope someday to have an interview with some PLO guys on here. I think that'd be fun. So if that's stuff you guys are looking forward to, let us know. If not, if you want more lacrosse content or less lacrosse content, you know, whatever. If you want more lacrosse content, uh, I have my account, Sunshine State Lacrosse. It's my blog. I talk about a bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, so. If you lacrosse, say lacrosse content, Topher will be very upset, mind you. Yes, I will be very upset. But if that's not for you, don't worry about this. But if you are wanting to know more about lacrosse or just big lacrosse people listening to this podcast i have plenty more content tons of stuff to share more than just whatever we do each week on this podcast and i don't want to just make this a plug for sunshine state lacrosse i will talk a little bit about what happened in college lacrosse last week stuff was crazy people were dropping 20 goals left and right i think north carolina dropped 27 on poor high point oh god and maryland looked like the best team in the country to me don't at me they look crazy good all right that's all I have for lacrosse. Um, yeah, so let's talk some NBA stuff. Uh, we have the ESPN power rankings, if I'm not mistaken, that came out today. I have them pulled up right now. Yeah. We don't need to screen share it with the people at home. We can just list off some teams. Let's start from bottom to top. If we disagree with any, we'll let you know. I have not looked at these. I don't think you have looked at these. So this is a very live reaction. <laughs> Um, um, so number 30 is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Sounds that fine to me. me. <laughs> that sounds fine to me. Uh, then Detroit, which, you know, also sounds fine to me. Those that two are... That doesn't surprise me. I'm so upset that Jeremy Grant is stuck there. <laughs> they are pits of misery that have no bright spots except poor Jeremy Grant. <laughs> They're just disaster fires, honestly, of teams and organizations. Last week we talked, I think Blake was the one who brought up how bad the Pistons were while we were dunking on the Timberwolves. So it's important <laughs> to know that both of these teams are just absolute messes. And then we've got the Rockets mm -hmm. and the Kings following that. And the Magic. We'll talk about all three of these as one unit here. How disappointing is this to see these three teams this low? Like, we love these teams. I don't want to talk about the Magic. So you are a Magic slash, uh, I believe, Warriors. yeah, Magic the slash Warriors. Warriors fan. The Warriors won the poll, so I'm not a bandwagon. You guys <laughs> voted for it, okay? So don't, don't, I'll fight you. But the point is, you are a Magic slash Warriors fan. We talked about the Kings. We gave them love on one of these shows. We've talked about the Rockets and how much we like their revitalized core. But it's just so disappointing that's just not working right, right now. What happened with Boogie? <laughs> Honestly. Oh, man. Are we and talking about... Oladipo now? Yeah, I don't know what's going on at Houston. Because, yeah, you're right. Oladipo, he was offered, I think, a two-year, $50 million extension, something like enough. that. He's and just he like... Said, yeah. Christian Wood got injured and everything went downhill. Yeah. Imagine, if, imagine how much better they would be right now if Christian Wood never heard his name. Okay, just, just um, why, why are the Kings so low? They have Darren Fox, Buddy Heald. They have... What... <sighs> That's the problem with the Kings, though, is that we th we think they're going to be good. We want them to be good. They're just not. They can't consistently put it together. Yeah. This has been a tough week. This has been a tough week for poor Sacramento. So so we have the Kings that had a bunch of promise early in the season but are now starting to fall off pretty darn hard. And their MLS expansion bid is gone. It's just gone. The billionaire so owner behind it is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> And then the team that 
the final team that was left undefeated at the beginning of the season is now 26, and that is the Orlando Magic. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, we kind of knew this was coming post Markel, though. Yeah. They might, honestly, they might still make the playoffs, though, because the East is just that bad. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the next three, which is the Cavs, the Thunder, and the Pelicans. The Cavs, I'm not surprised that they're down there. Like, they – it's okay. So they have good players. It's just terribly organized. Yeah. And of those good players, let's be honest, they have like maybe three good players and that's kind of it. I'm honestly surprised if you came in a preseason and you said they would be this high on the ranking, I'd honestly be impressed. <laughs> the Cavs are probably the worst organization in basketball. Sands, maybe the Knicks or the Pistons. Like they're really, really bad. You know, I don't, I don't even know what happened to the Thunder. Yeah, it, well, if we're talking about, like, coming into this season, getting rid of Chris Paul was probably a mistake. Um, I mean, they have Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who is a beast, but... They do. That guy is a guy, he's a all-star caliber player. I don't think he made the all-star team, but that's just because there's other guys who are also good. But the point is, he's an all-star caliber guy, um, and he's playing well. Even now, he's playing well. It's just having Chris Paul, that veteran mentor, the leader of the team, the guy who'll take all the clutch shots when you need him to, losing that is a massive loss. And that brick wall in Steven Adams. That's also, you're right, a very underrated loss. I mean, that guy's a defensive anchor down there. So they're struggling. And then what, New Orleans? That, disappointing. That Pelicans being 23 is disappointing. Yeah, so pretty much the same issues with the Pelicans we've had all year. They've been had hot streaks because Zion has been like, baby god but they score a crap ton of points but they also allow all of the points because they're just the worst defensive team like in the universe you know you're yeah. not wrong <laughs> they just... the next the next three sorry we're I'm, I'm trying to zoom through these because there's a lot yeah. to talk about, about these, three, these three these three are kind of boring though and then there's the hawks the wizards and the bulls i'm i'm so very upset that the hawks are 22 because yeah Another I one was, of the most disappointing teams in the league. I was expecting them to – they're they're beneath the Bulls. Like, yeah, the Bulls. And credit, was Trey Young not an all-star at all? Uh, No. Yeah. How wild is that, huh? I Yeah, right? He's like a he's like a mini Steph Curry. Well, not a mini Steph Curry. Well. He's kind of a mini Steph Curry. He's like, kind of a mini Steph Curry. <laughs> he's, he is pretty small. But the, I get your point. He is a very similar player. We love Trey Young on this show. Oh, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in Atlanta land. It's a disaster. Wizards. Washington, I really don't want to talk about that. I just, they, Hey, I, they've gotten better. They've gotten better since the I beginning mean, of the yeah, season. They have, got, they have gotten better, but I just don't care enough to talk about them. And then with Chicago, there's not really anything to say, but uh, good job, Zach Levine. Zach Levine. You're good. Uh, their team is in the playoff hunt. He's an all-star. Being, yeah, he is. Their team is in the playoff hunt at 15 and 17 because the East is just horrendous. Yep. But yeah, good job, Zach Levine. You're an all-star now. He was borderline an all-star last year, so I'm glad to see you. Good job, Zach Levine, for putting it, putting the Bulls on your back. All right, next three. Next three, Charlotte Hornets, Memphis Grizzlies, and Indiana Pacers. All right, so I'll start here off. I actually want to start with Memphis. I think they're a little disappointing all things considered, but I know they had their COVID issues and they're still really young. So being at 15 and 15 in this weird season, not too bad. All right. Which one of those three? Do you have any comments on any of those three? I want to talk about the Pacers. Demantis Sabonis. Yeah. Good player he is. Um, and, and when they get, is Karis LeVert even playing? No, he's still out. I think, I think. he's still out because of the growth that. Yeah. The issue he out. had when he got, when they found it, when he traded. Yeah, so, I mean, put Karis LeVert in that team and – There you go. They're not, like, a contender, but, yeah, they'll, probably, but... they'll probably make the playoffs. Yeah. And then um, Charlotte are weird, and LaMelo Ball is way better than he has any right to be. <laughs> I know you've not liked LaMelo because he's kind of an idiot. For the longest time, I've hated – I just hate <laughs> the ball family, except for Lonzo. I respect Lonzo. That's it. Well, that's because Lonzo's the one who just shuts up and does his work. Yeah, he L – Lonzo just stays on his path. He plays his game. 
goes home, doesn't say anything. Yeah. But LaMelo, he, I, I like that LaMelo is good in the NBA. I think he's just different. He's just a unique player who is just a very, he's a lot of personality, a lot of life to him. And don't even get me started <laughs> on LaVar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Let's, we're close enough. We're closing in on the top 10 here. Let's rattle off these next yeah. two here. Ooh. 16 Boston Celtics. 15, Mavericks. 14, the Knicks. All right. How wild is it that the Knicks are above the Celtics right now? Hey, I think that's pretty awesome. I will agree with you. That is incredible. But the Celtics have fallen off a cliff the past couple of weeks. Yeah, like you might as well just not have Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown on the same team together. Yeah, I know they've had some injury and COVID issues, but like, oh man, they are like they, they were Dennis Cantor to be like a kind of an anchor in that defense. Uh Ennis Cantor is one of the worst defensive players in the NBA. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. He's the, the whole thing with Ennis Cantor is that he's a great post scorer, like elite rebounder, but he can't defend worth crap. That's yeah. So his stats no, look great, I but re- then you run to I why he's not what I said about Ennis Cantor. <laughs> But yeah, so they're falling off hard. But then on the other side of it, the Knicks just keep being not bad. The Knicks just keep being the Knicks. Like Julius Randle is an actual All Star. That actually happened. You remember at the end of that one game where like they just hijacked his interview and they were like, <laughs> "If this man isn't an All Star, we gonna have some problems." <laughs> they got their wish. And- they are the feel-good story of the NBA. Am I right or am I right? It's just they have, that franchise has been through so much bull crap. Oh, yeah. And this is a very fun, like, underdog team because mm-hmm. almost all of these guys are cast-offs or underrated. Yeah. Like, Julius Randle, this is, what, his third, third or fourth team? Uh, he was a hot prospect, but he's going to be kind of cast aside. And then a bunch of, like, underappreciated rookies and young players. So they are just – so much fun and then dallas we talked about a lot on this show yeah just dallas kind of just disappointing but the one interesting thing wonder, baby you said to me that they're like potentially shopping chris Stapps. yeah they so i i saw that there was a rumor about shopping chris Stapps because he would have some insane pull with like they they could get a lot of stuff for chris Stapps because he is elite and i'm like why would you do that you have the you have you have luca and you have chris Stapps. you don't want to get rid of that like no, that- you, you see lebron and anthony davis on the same team that's why you would want to keep luca and chris Stapps. i think luca and chris Stapps are probably the best duo in the league other than lebron and uh, anthony davis. no no they i I w- in my opinion, they are because they put up so many points. Okay, how, how, about the, how about that? Are they, are they your favorite, like, big little combo then? Yeah. Behind Anthony and LeBron? Okay, because you're not going to tell me they're better than, like, Steph and Clay. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Okay. But, okay, but you can't really bring that one in because Clay is out. Please. All right, yeah. We're actually going to talk about that in a little bit, but, yeah, but. I'm just saying that feels like high praise, but hey, you you're a you're a big Mavs guy, so. I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right, next three we have the next three: Toronto Raptors, Miami uh, Heat, and the Golden State Warriors. Yes, Tampa Bay Raptors, Miami Heat, and your Golden State Warriors. Uh, Toronto is just kind of a boring mix of good and bad. I have zero opinions on them. How did they start off so poorly and then just make their way back up? Because they're. Is there after- a- there's a good team. They're just boring. I don't have anything interest in them. Why are they still calling them the Toronto Raptors? Bro, they're the Tampa Bay Raptors until proven otherwise. Uh, the Miami Heat, they've gotten way better. Uh, oh, yeah. they, they were really struggling early in this season. Five games. Yeah, they, they – uh, Heater, I think a lot like Toronto, they just started off bad, mostly because of things outside of their control. And now that they're healthy, they're in a bit of a groove, they're starting to pick up to where we expect them to be a good contending team in the East. Maybe not like an elite contender, but certainly a solid playoff team. And then Golden State, they're a fun team, huh? Yeah, they're just they're just fun. 
They are just fun. And obviously, just Steph Curry. That's yeah. That's why Steph Curry. They're just that's it. Up a that's lot it. of points. Unfortunately, the other night Draymond Green went out with an ankle injury. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So. Oh my God, do I like Draymond Green now? What has happened? I don't <laughs> like Draymond Green, but I'm. I'm just gonna say he's a he's a good player. What is happening? I don't like that this season. I like the Warriors again. This is just weird. Hey, I never stopped liking the Warriors, bro. Like, with Kevin Durant, they were the least likable thing in the world. Oh yeah, no, I hated that. I absolutely hated that. All right, all right, all right. So we've reached the top ten. The Golden State Warriors are eleven. Top ten. We're gonna go team by team instead of in groups. So number ten, my Portland Trail Blazers. They've had a pretty good year, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dame Lillard playing at a fringe MVP level. CJ McCollum playing a, well. They're just a decent team. They're just a good team. I don't know if they have the legs to be a playoff, like a, a championship contender like I Los like Angeles. Yusuf Nurkic. Bro, I love Yusuf. When he's healthy, things are just better. Things I are also just really better. like CJ McCollum. I think he's an underrated player. Yeah. Um, both of those guys have actually been hurt recently, unfortunately. Uh, which not great, but but they're still one of the better teams in the West. They play their role players play way better than they have any right to. And again, Damian Lillard is an MVP caliber player. Yep. And those can carry a team when the team isn't that great around it. All right, then we have Denver, number nine. Slightly disappointing recent in recent weeks, but still one of the better teams in the league. Still have Jokic. Nicole. Um, uh yeah do you have anything about the nuggets i don't have too much we've talked about them i feel like a lot i, I wanted to talk about the next team so all right take it away who we got san antonio spurs at number eight can you believe that could you no. can you would you believe that if i wasn't reading it off espn's website no if i would if if coming into the season if you told me that the spurs were a top 10 team in the league i would just not believe you just straight up, I, you're oh, yeah. capping. But look at Demar Derozan though. Like, De- Demar is playing fantastic, like a fantastic ball game. He is still like painfully inefficient with his kind of mediocre shooting percentages and tendencies for mid rangers. But hey, twenty plus points a game scorer who gives you good defense. It's a good athlete. I don't know if he should have been an all star because. You know the old saying of if someone got snubbed, who do you take off? But he's certainly at that caliber. And then I guess the collective is just playing well as well because they have one of the least – I and at least maybe this is a little harsh, but they have one of the least talented rosters top to bottom in the league. But hey, but they've they got one of the best coaches in the NBA history. And even beyond just Pop, they have one of the best coaching staffs oh, yeah. in the league. So I think Coach, what's her name? Uh, uh, is that, isn't Becky Hammond on the Spurs? I think so. Yeah. Wait, is it? Hold on. Pretty sure. Me... I might be mistaken, but I don't think I am. And isn't Tim Duncan also an assistant coach? Who? Tim Duncan. Becky Hammond, yeah. yeah She's so... an assistant coach for... Yeah, so they got a great staff, great... And their players are playing very well, honestly. I don't want to say, like, the players are bad. They're well... They're, they're a well-oiled machine together. Yeah, they are just a... They are one of those teams that just... They just breathe that team over self kind of philosophy. I think, I think they look like last year's Heat, just, just a little, kind of, bit. just a little bit, just because, just because they they don't have all star players except for maybe Demar Derozan, which yeah. was Jimmy Butler last year. But, and that's and that's like why they're not quite as good as the Heat is because Demar Derozan isn't quite as good as Jimmy Butler. But yeah. continue your point. No, yeah. I was done. I was done. <laughs> Oh, jeez. All right. Next, we got Philadelphia. This one was kind of disappointing because I'd expect them to be a little higher with that team being led but, by Joel Embiid. Yeah, but you can't uh, really disagree with the placement, to be fair. They just aren't as good as they were at the beginning of the year. They fall off a little bit. They're just not quite as sharp, and they don't shoot the three ball well, according to this. And that's true. I mean, think about who was on their team. They don't have J.J. Redick anymore. They don't have uh, – what's his – But that's it. <laughs> they got Danny Green. Yeah, but remember how bad Danny Green was at times last year? 
Uh, and then Ben Simmons is a non-threat. Joel Embiid is a pretty poor three-point shooter, even though he'll do it sometimes. So I guess it makes sense. But that's something – with that, that's something to look for at the trade deadline. So them to try and sniff around for those sharpshooter types because those are the types of players we see traded around the deadline a lot. Yeah. So keep keep your eye out for that. Where, um, where's J.R. Smith? I mean, I know J.R. Smith. Is no, 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 no. They can get something better than J.R. Smith. All right. Who's number six? Phoenix Suns, number oh, six. That's very impressive. That, that Chris Paul trade is clearly working out well. Among other things, and then of course they're it's just a young, young team. It's a young team with a good veteran uh, presence, with yeah. a really good veteran presence. Because mm-hmm. Chris Paul is probably one of the best veteran presences that have been in the league. Did I? Yeah. What, is, what? What? What did I say? Yeah, I, I think he's doing a lot of what he did last year with uh, Oklahoma City. It's a young, talented team, and he's kind of the veteran leader putting it all together, I think it's even gotten better because they their young pieces are better young pieces. Devin Booker is one of the best, most underrated players in the league. Pro- mm-hmm. Maybe maybe a top five, top three pure scorer of the basketball alongside guys like Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant. Yeah, he's a bucket. When he got snubbed uh, for the All-Star vote originally, I, I was so shocked. And I understand why they put Chris Paul in over him, mostly because it's Chris Paul, but to be honest with you, I thought he was more deserving than Chris Paul. Even if Chris Paul's what took them from a fringe playoff team to a fringe contender, I still think Devin Booker is the main man on that team, and he's playing great basketball once again. Yeah. All right, number four. Covered it all. Number <laughs> five is the Milwaukee Bucks. They are on a scorcher. They're on a scorcher, but. I don't want to say that they're bad because they're not. They're definitely they're not. Because they're not a bad team. They're a well-put-together team. It's just they haven't impressed me this season that that much. Yeah. Because the past two seasons, they've started hot, and they've stayed hot until the postseason. Hmm. So this team starting off poorly to getting hot, I mean, I'm seeing maybe a difference in the postseason. Yeah, that's possible. Because, that, I mean, but also, I haven't been impressed yet. Yeah, I I think they uh, they did come out of the gates a little slow, but they are still very, very good. Giannis is still a top five player in basketball. They're going to be maybe the main title threat in the East, to be honest with you. They are just that good. Well, except Brooklyn. I keep forgetting Brooklyn is like the super team. But yeah. uh, right up there, right up there with Brooklyn is the best teams in the in the East. All right, number four, the Los Angeles Clippers, the team the Bucks just beat on Sunday. Obviously, they got Kawhi and Paul George doing well. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, they're the same team they were last year, really. Yeah. They're very good. They have their two superstars. They'll contend in the playoffs. We'll see if playoff P can finally deliver a playoff performance. Um. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're just an elite I mean, team. You know. Yeah. You just. You pretty much just said it all. Stop stealing. Stop stealing these teams, bro. Here, Come you on. can say. You can share all that you need to say about <laughs> the third place team. Oh man, I I haven't been watching this team, but I could just assume that the Brooklyn <laughs> Nets are at number three just because the big three, which is Kyrie, James Harden, and KD. So I mean. It's pretty self-explanatory. They have some well-oiled parts around them. Um, and all three of them are playing a really good game. So, Yeah, I know. mean, we had, we had some questions about them as a trio, but I feel like their chemistry with each other has just made it work. It's just the, the dynamic between the three of them was very different than we predicted. Yeah, I, and I think a lot of that's just because they're good friends. They like mm-hmm. each other, and they like playing with each other. So even yeah. though on paper they're all ball dominant and maybe they don't work together, in practice they're one of the best offenses in the in the basketball. Mm-hmm. All right, who we got at number two? We got the Los Angeles Lakers at number two. Yeah, and I think they would be number one if they had Anthony Davis. Well, yeah, almost certainly. But it's, it's interesting. We talked about last week. 
are they going to start slipping with Anthony Davis gone and all these guys gone? But this past week, they went a they had LeBron pretty much single handedly led them to a great week. They yeah. won a lot of big games. Um, they beat Portland, they beat Golden State, who are good teams, playoff caliber teams, and then like LeBron, Dennis man, Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder also played a good part in this week's game. Yeah, I think he had some injury issues. <clears throat> Did he? At times, I believe so. But he, he's been playing. He's been the yeah. yeah. I, he's he, been he came back. Starting. I think I think he came back, but he was he was like injured last week and earlier in the week. But what I'm saying, how good is LeBron still? Oh yeah, like the man's a freak of nature. We can go back to the tweets that Tom Brady and him exchanged <laughs> before last season, where. Tom Brady was like, I'm going to keep going until I can't dunk anymore. And then LeBron replied with, I'm going to keep going until I can't throw touchdown passes anymore. <laughs> and so, and then they proceeded to go win championships. Yeah, and LeBron is still right there. Uh, so he is crazy. He is and not only, still as sharp as anyone else in the league. He is still a top three at worst player in basketball. <laughs> and he's like 36 now. It's ridiculous. And he's now he's just going to carry the team with Anthony Davis, and it'll probably work. And then number one is the Utah Jazz. We've talked about them several times. They're the team of the season so far. We don't we they, don't need to talk about them. They just don't lose consistently. They're super efficient. <clears throat> uh, Mike Conley. Did you see that hilarious post-game post interview with Donovan Mitchell and Joe Ingles? Which one? Um. I think it's the one where Joe Ingles from off camera was like, I don't think he's a superstar. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like Donovan Mitchell was was just talking to the reporter and Joe Ingles just comes out of nowhere and roasts him. <laughs> and then Donovan Mitchell just sits there and takes it. He's just like, yeah, I know. Oh, gosh. Jazz, they're having fun, though. They're a good team. Again, we talked about them. What they, I think we spent a lot of time on them two weeks ago. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So we don't need to go too much further into them. Um, all right, I teased it a little bit ago. You sent me the video from I think it was first take where Stephen A was Stephen. talking about how good the Warriors would be with Clay Thompson. Oh my God! Just it's just so much fun to see the Splash Brothers together. Yeah. So you've kind of asked me this question, but I'm going to ask it to you now. How? Where do the Warriors finish with healthy Steph and healthy Clay like this season? Top five. All right, let's go to the playoffs. Where, how do they do? They make the finals, the conference semis. Like, what's going on? Honestly, I think they with the team that they have now, like with everyone healthy, with all the pieces, like just and then normal injuries. Uh, well, you saw them do it once. I don't think anything would get in their way of doing it again. Because if you get in Steph Curry's way, he's literally going to break your ankles. And if you get in Klay Thompson's way, he's going to score 11 three-pointers in a single game against you. And he's not yeah. going to miss a single one of them. <laughs> he's going to yeah. go 100% for three-point shots. He, he's going to go 11 for 11 in attempts, in shots made for attempts. So... And then Draymond Green is just going to lock you up. And then yeah. you got big man James Wiseman, who is very resembling of Andrew Bogut when they won that. Because Andrew Bogut was a big guy. Yeah, nice tertiary center there. Yeah. Yeah, and he's also a very nice young prospect. He's one of the better rookies this year. I, I agree with your sentiment. They would be one of the better teams. And like you say, it's not that they're the best team with Clay, but they're the kind of team that can just go on a run, if that makes sense. Because they have two guys who, when they are hot, are the most unstoppable players, like in the world. And that's the kind of momentum that, if you just catch right fire, right catch right chemistry in a playoff run, mm -hmm. they could beat anybody in the West. They could beat anyone yeah. in the league. So I hope that they can both be back and be healthy next year. Oh, yeah. I, I really Because the league with 
the Warriors' big three of Curry, Thompson, and Draymond, it's just more fun. Are we really complimenting Draymond? Yes. I know he's not like an all-star, but he's an important piece for their team in the dirty work and leadership side of things. Yeah. And I like them when they don't have Kevin Durant. (laughs) Because when they don't have Kevin Durant, they're not overwhelmingly good. The thing is, Steph Curry out of college was – he was teamed up with Monte Ellis. (laughs) And I just thought that was so much fun because Monte Ellis is a scoring machine. Bro, that man was a certified bucket. Oh, yeah. And then so and then Steph Curry learned from him and it just it was just so much fun. Yeah. So and as fun as that is though, we can I all agree. I haven't always been like a war I wasn't always a Warriors fan. It's just I liked watching the Warriors because they're they were a fun team. Yeah. Except for when Kevin Durant was there. I absolutely hated that. Yeah, because I was just that overwhelmed. Was I was just I was just too good and they were just so annoying. Yeah. But when it's when it's their normal core though, where they're just another very good team, it's great. I was trying to say, as fun as Monta Ellis and Steph Curry is together, I think we can all agree that the compliment of Clay Thompson to Steph Curry is just such a perfect symbiotic relationship. I don't, very few in history can top it. It might be the number one backcourt in history, to be honest with you. There's an argument he made for it that I would listen to. I also have a really w- weird question. You remember how, you remember how Dennis Rodman was always like the flashy player. He was always like in your face and always talking big smack. Mm-hmm. Or not talking big smack, but well, yeah, obviously. But that <laughs> he's Dennis Rodman. Mm-hmm. But you know how he was like all over the place, like being a talented player. Mm-hmm. Does Lamelo remind you of that a little bit? Uh, flamboyant. Just kind of is like, I, I guess I see what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Because Lamelo isn't as flamboyant as Dennis Rodman. No, no, no. And it's also not a super fair comparison because Dennis Rodman is like this defensive lockdown rebound machine who is worth literally zero on offense. But as far as just their like personality and all over the place, just big energy kind of guys. I, knowing, I kinda... like knowing that they're. They are the sh- – the, they are – Yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying. That's not – yeah, that's an interesting way to look at LaMelo, to be honest. I hadn't really thought of that, but that's a very interesting perspective. I feel like – I feel like LaVar just drilled it into his head. He's like, you're a good player. You got to show off. Hey, but here's the thing. is LaMelo's confidence is his best attribute, and it's working really well. Because he'll just pull up from 28. Or, wait, that's no more. He'll just pull up from, like, 30 and bang it because he's just good. He won't always bang it, but he's just got the confidence to just keep shooting and keep attacking and make flashy plays and go crazy. And that's kind of what I love about LaMelo is that he's not always great, but he's always thinks he's great. And I don't think it's gotten to the point to, like, it's a gross extent where he, like, doesn't try. It's more like he's the kind of great where he knows he can keep playing well even when he's in a slump. Not like Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> no. I think that's Lonzo's problem, is that Lonzo's not confident enough in himself to take the shots he needs to and consistently be a playmaker. Hey, he got them nice passes, though. Yeah, he's a very nice passer, but I don't know if he's much of anything else. How does this become lo- the ball talk? That was weird. That was a weird diversion. All right. No, it was just we were talking about basketball, and I just I was just like I thought yeah. of the, the comparison between Rodman and it's interesting. I, it's weird. Lamelo's kind of player. I can't quite figure out what he's like because he's just he's really unique. I like him a lot. I do like his game. Um. All right. So I think that's all we have as far as stuff. Really, I think we get to the outro all here. All that's left. Have anything else? Makers. Yeah, so, oh, my God, who won that? Last week, Mbappe won pretty uh, last, overwhelmingly. Yeah, last week, Kylian Mbappe won. Yeah, which is fair. He, he had a hat trick against Barcelona in a Champions League game, so I can't really knock that call one bit. Ryan Tarafanko finished second, though. Thanks, Lax Twitter, for that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, who, who, who went first last time? I don't know. I you. 
I don't eh. know. I don't think I don't think our audience cares. No, that's fine. Do you want to list your guys first? No, I'll just go first. Can we talk about LeBron this week? He put the team on his back. He 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 pulled the Greg Jennings, my leg broke, <laughs> but I gotta put the team on my back. Um he in the win against the Trail Blazers, he went with let's see the stat 28 points. 11 rebounds, seven assists, four steals, and three blocks. Once I saw that, I was like, I ha- I, I immediately sent it to Topher. And <laughs> we both just sat there in awe. So yeah. that's what – and also he's just LeBron. So yeah. you can't really deny him that. And then we got uh, Jimmy Buckets as my second play- playmaker. Just because he's been leading that five-game tear. He's like Spartacus. <laughs> leading that leading that charge so yeah those are fair shots i actually i think this is the first time i'm picking a basketball guy if i'm not mistaken i finally there's just an nba player who really caught my eye and it's it'd be unfair to ignore their contribution this best week is Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo. i know as you say earlier in this episode the bucks haven't had the most dynamic start to the season but they're really catching fire they've won five straight Giannis has put up 35 plus points five games in a row in those wins. He destroyed the Clippers on Sunday, which is, I believe, his last game he's playing before we recorded this. So, Giannis, he's on an absolute flames right now. So, Giannis is my one playmaker. And then my second playmaker is a guy I almost nominated a few weeks ago, but I said, I would pick you, but you lost, so I can't. So, then he went out and put up the same exact stat line, but in a win this time. So, it's Ryan Tierney. Of Hofstra men's lacrosse, the guy is on absolutely wild. His second 11 point game of the season against Stony Brook in the battle for Long Island, eight goals and three assists again, including this crazy goal. If you're if lacrosse people definitely saw it, I don't know if everyone else saw it. It was on Sports Center top 10 actually. So he's coming up the cage and then like fakes the jump shot and cuts back and does this disgusting uh, low to high like filthy shot on the goalkeeper with so much sting. Oh my God. That was such a good goal. I might clip it in here. TBD. In the net. He pulled off the net. He drew two Seawolves defenders. There was Sam Lofty sitting right in front of the net all by himself. 15 on the shot clock. Tierney takes a shot and he scores. Another one to the top corner. If you're watching this on video, you might be seeing Brian Tierney's epic goal, but oh, so good. Brian Tierney and Giannis Antetokounmpo are my player next to the week. So total, we got LeBron James. Of the Los Angeles Lakers. Giannis Antetokounmpo of the Milwaukee Pucks. Jimmy Buckets Butler of the Miami Heat. And Ryan Tierney of Hofstra men's lacrosse. Four equally important uh, athletes in the global conversation, surely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. This was a fun episode. I like this one. It was kind of chill, kind of vibed. Kind of so, unusual yeah. because we're recording it at eight o'clock at night yeah plus Something i'm on we record early in the afternoon yeah oh gosh crazy w- wacky day I'm, it's weird i'm recording in a different building <laughs> I'm at my house in orlando recording on a different computer <laughs> uh because my mine is broken so it was a weird episode but i liked it it was good vibes yeah i really don't like the light from the kitchen <laughs> which is why we do it in the afternoon when i have the natural light coming through the window <laughs> oh gosh so hopefully next week a little more normal than it was this week but thank you for listening if you're if you've listened around to the end i have no idea how long this is we were just vibing <laughs> we started at uh like 7 45 and it's so, now 8 50 all right cool so we got i guess it's a long one like it dig it i was worried this would be short oh gosh it had been very loose unfiltered hey ending. we we really stretched it out with that you know, the ranking of the teams and me getting upset over some of them, just being like, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, uh, gosh. Big bus. Yeah. We thought we didn't have much to talk about. Turns out we had a lot more to say than we thought we did. That's the, that's the beauty hey, of podcasts like this. But that's why we do it for you guys. <laughs> we have so much fun doing this. Oh, my gosh. We, we do. We hope that you have as much fun listening to us as we have. My, honestly, if, 
doing if it. you if you have half as much fun as we have doing it then we're, we're doing a pretty good job uh on that note if there's things you guys want to see more of or comments you have about how we run this show uh heading into the future here just let us know hit us up on social media and if you know anything about sports and you want to be a guest you can also let us know yeah we love guests we had our big panel of maybe people maybe last we'll week. do a wheel spin and see who wins the wheel and we'll have <laughs> you on the show yeah so if you are interested in being a guest host for a week or if you are an interesting sports personality and want to be interviewed something like that if you want to talk about hockey yeah if you want a big hockey plug we would love to we'll just have different... yeah mean... we would just we would just love different perspectives and if you want to well. talk about baseball you know you can find it a... i was gonna say find a different podcast but never mind yeah we'll have baseball <laughs> <laughs> But I actually like your take. So, yeah, we love different perspectives. If you are – we again, we are football guys primarily. I'm also a big oh, lacrosse guy. Soccer, the, the, like the biggest scale ones. Yes. So if you guys want, want to bring your perspective on those or you're a big baseball guy, we love having people on just to share different things. You know, we're not the only playmakers out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. How much of this ending am I going to have to cut? <laughs> I mean – you don't have to cut all of it. You can cut out some of us, some of it, just us having fun. No, I kind of like it. It's just a good vibe. It's good. It matches the episode's tone. You know, it's just a vibe. This is this is the most behind the scenes type of episode. <laughs> all right, I think that's all we have to say. Um, again, thanks again for listening. Uh, we'll hope we'll be back next week. We might have some stuff in between then. Ooh, just keep following us on social media for updates. Also, fist bump. All right, goodbye, everybody. See ya.